They're following my Billy Billy. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to a very, very special Chinese food adventure. I'm here in Chengdu. It's a food capital of China, known for its spicy, mouth numbing foods. But when it comes to Chengdu and food in Chengdu, the first thing that pops into my head is of course the food ranger. He spent many, many years here. He's got so many amazing resources, food guides, food tours, Google Maps where you can access and see different places and what to order. So I reached out to him and I'm actually about to get on Zoom with him. He's gonna be our remote food guide for today's food adventure. I am literally deceased. Oh God, I'm so nervous. Okay, let's go. Hello. Hi! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I, I have no words. Hello, how are you? <laughs> how, how are you? Wow, nice to connect with you here. I am so excited. You have no idea how excited I am. And I'm really happy to chat with you too. I love your content. How are you? Where are you? What are you up to? I am in Dubai <laughs> and definitely loving it here, but I'm missing China too a lot. Oh, and I'm really excited to hear you're in Chengdu. I miss the chili oil. Hi, how are you? Tell me, what do I need to know about Chengdu? Tell me everything. There's too much amazing food. <laughs> like, just, you could, I mean, l eat for decades there, you know? I wish you could yeah. be here. The city is calling your name. Uh, it's in the breeze. <laughs> Trevor, <laughs> we want Trevor. <laughs> oh, I miss it. Once we can, we're gonna come right back. What would you say are kind of like the characteristics of like Sichuan food that you could find in Chengdu? It's xiang, it's like really aromatic, yep. less, spicy than what it's made out to be. Yep. It looks spicy on camera, but it's more <laughs> like aromatic. If you eat it, it's just like, it just gives you this nice, soothing, warm, chilly sensation, as opposed to a mouth burning, like fresh chili burn. So I know you have this amazing food guide. I've been checking it out kind of religiously leading up to this Chengdu trip. But I wanted to know from you, what are your like favorite three places that you think I should check out? And I'll, I'll go and check it out. Uh, well, there's a few different like uh, categories of food that you need to try. So for sure, hot pot is in there. Chengdu uh, or Chongqing hot pot, they're both amazing. Like you've got to have one hot pot place. You got to have a, you got to have a noodle joint. Yep. Um, and you got to get some dishes. Okay. So to start, uh, I would say, go to get some dishes. So this is one of Chengdu's most traditional restaurants. It's a it's a classic like fly restaurant. They're okay. called uh, Changing Guanze. So I've just arrived at the fly restaurant and it is so cool. There are all these chefs out here preparing the food. The smell is absolutely incredible. <laughs> They're so delicious and the locals just go there for eating like because the food is so good. So the fly restaurant Trevor's recommended I go to today is called Chen Shi Liang Fen and it's been a mainstay here in Chengdu for over 70 years. It's in an alleyway, an old traditional neighborhood. There's no traffic, no cars allowed. Wow. So it's just pedestrian and uh, it's always super busy. It's got a huge array of Sichuan dishes to try. And the coolest part about it is the food is brought out from the back of a bike. The food is actually brought out on the back of a bike, which I wasn't sure I was going to see happen, but it actually does. And they're put onto a giant table that you put, you just get the point at what you want to eat. Basically, you come into the restaurant and you've got all these different dishes being prepared on different stations. You've got a Liangfen station over here, mix of white and yellow liangfen. You've got a meat section here with these beautiful roast meats that's being cut up over here. And then you've got the hot dishes over here that are being brought out all the time, constantly refreshed. Oh my God, it looks absolutely amazing. Oh, <laughs> Some famous dishes to try there. There's like the uh, pig grain tofu dish. Ooh. It's kind of like a mapo tofu upgraded with pig grain. Their most famous dish is the uh, liangfen uh, jelly, the Huang liangfen jelly, and they cover it in their signature oh. like chili oil and uh, bean sauce. So of course, I took Trevor's advice and got the two dishes he recommended. Something that Trevor didn't mention is just how big the portion sizes are. 
how am I supposed to eat all of this? So this is the one he recommended, the nao hua dofu, which is like the mapo dofu with the spin. Just a bit of pig brain added. You can see the bits of pig brain in there. Also a lot of Sichuan peppercorns, a lot of chili. The dish is in general quite red, so I'm assuming it's gonna be quite spicy. So for that reason, I got myself some rice just to try to tone that down a little bit. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my goodness. So this has got the pig brain inside and I've just tried to lift up a piece with my chopstick and it just falls apart. It's almost as tender as the tofu and that's saying something because tofu is very, very tender. So to be completely honest, brain is still one of those things that still it's still taking me a while to be able to eat and not like freak out a little bit over. But I feel like this dish with all of that spice and the tofu and the texture is actually going to be quite easy to accept. It's time to get in there with the brain, the dish that Trevor recommended I need to try here at this fly restaurant. Let's go. Oh wow. It's really good. It doesn't have any taste actually. I hardly even have to bite it. It just kind of slips down. It's, yeah, it's literally just like tofu. Yeah, it's pretty much like a similar flavor profile to a mapo dofu. Spicy, numbing. Mm, salty, umami. And it will forever be the dish that took the scariness out of eating brains. Now I'm keen to try the signature dish of this restaurant, the Huang Liang Fen. Oh, it smells amazing. Look at that. That's art. So it's made from peas, wan dou, and the resulting texture is slippery, flexible, and chewy. And just looking at this sauce on top here, I can tell how umami this is gonna be. Oh, that is so freaking good. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I love liang fen. Oh, oh. Be still, my beating heart. Super, super umami. A little bit spicy, not super blow the top of your head off spicy. And actually after having these two dishes now, the spice levels are quite fine. I don't feel overwhelmed, which just means I can go in for more and more food. Oh, it was so good. And the customers just keep rolling in, as well as the dishes for that matter. <laughs> but um, So I've been thinking about this in the last few minutes. And honestly, the only thing that really separates this place here from like a Michelin star gourmet restaurant experience is the price. I'm eating this fantastic, flavorful, amazing food. I have a waterside seat. I'm outside under the trees. The service is great. There's even someone coming to serenade me during my meal. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. But I think this just shows me that here in Chengdu, good food is very accessible, can be enjoyed by everyone from all walks of life. Good food doesn't need to be expensive, and that's what I love about this. The food is for the people. Next up, you're going to go for some noodles. Yep. You're, actually, there's two noodle spots. The first one is a huigo romian, twice cooked pork noodles. Super delicious, super spicy. You eat it like you can sit on the stools on the street. It's a, an amazing joint. Here's the menu. Number one on the menu, Hui Guo Rongyan, the one that Trevor recommended I should get. 12 RMB for a small serving, 15 RMB for a big one. And because this place is so busy, this restaurant has a production line with different stations for different tasks. First, we have the sauce station here, where the sauces for each bowl of noodles is made. Oh yeah. Get that chili oil. Very generous amount there. Then we have the noodle cooking station. Noodles are added to the bowls of the pre-prepared sauces. And finally, the toppings are added. This one here is the famous hui guo ro, twice cooked pork topping. Oh, xie wow. Oh my golly gosh, this looks and smells absolutely freaking amazing. Okay, where should I sit? <laughs> oh goodness. I guess I'll sit here. Oh my gosh, so excited. 
Oh wow. So this hui guo rou here, it's not just a noodle topping, it's actually one of the most famous dishes from Sichuan province, featuring a lot of layers of flavors, very umami, slightly spicy, not over the top. This isn't gonna like burn your mouth off. And it's a deceptively simple dish. It's a dish that pretty much everyone in this region grew up with, like home style cooking. And although it looks simple, it's really not simple to do well. So a lot of people will actually judge a restaurant by the quality of their hui guo rou. So let's give it a go. Oh, really hard to describe that flavor. There's just so many levels to it. And that's another thing about Sichuan food. It's about the levels, not necessarily about the spice. You should be able to taste a lot of different things happening in your mouth when you eat Sichuan food. Mm. And when you put it with the noodles and all of those sauces at the bottom that you've just mixed all together. Oh my gosh. And you can definitely taste all those beautiful layers in this dish, but they take maybe five minutes to work themselves out in your mouth. The first thing you'll taste is the saltiness, the umaminess, just that savory rush when you get that in your mouth. And then after that saltiness, you can start to decipher the sesame paste that's in that and some of the flavors in the sauce. A little bit more spice is hitting you by this stage. And then about five minutes later, your mouth is just buzzing because there is Sichuan peppercorn in this. Not too much that it overwhelms your palate and you can't taste anything, but just enough that you've got a nice little Nice little buzz going on there. And another level to this dish that I'm only kind of just realizing now is a slight sourness from these pickles here. So good. And you know you're doing it local when you're literally about to be hit by a car. That's how I like it. Hot shim ni jue de. I like hot shim. I like hot shim. You like hot shim? I like hot shim. You like hot shim? I like hot shim. I like hot shim. I like hot shim. I like hot shim. I like hot Honestly, I will take sitting on the street, eating with the locals any day over a fancy restaurant. Like, this is where it's at. This is what food is to me. You can tell me a little bit of Sichuan You want to eat it? You want to eat it? You want to eat it? Oh, they're following my Billy Billy. Yeah, it's just me. Yes, it's just me. It's just me. Yeah! 10 out of 10 dish. But it was only after finishing my bowl that I realized I missed a vital part of the experience. This is what? This is and pretty much everyone here has a bowl of mian tang, noodle water, to accompany their noodles. It's free and it's constantly refilled with fresh noodle water throughout the day. Okay, very curious to try this mian tang. Yeah, it tastes, it tastes like noodles, funnily enough. And it's free. And apparently it cuts through grease and cuts through the, uh, the spiciness. It's good. Simple, easy, digestible. See you next Oh, bye-bye. 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 And bless this guy, still scrolling through my feed. Anyone out there watching this video, if you haven't already subscribed, would absolutely love it if you took a second to do so. See, 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 yeah. Next noodle spot is actually more uh, famous for their chow show, their Sichuan wontons, their Sichuan Hongyo chow show chili oil wontons. Let's give these a mix. Get all that chili oil all up in there. Oh my God, it smells amazing. Got to get all those babies completely coated in that delicious chili oil. If your mouth's not watering, mine definitely is. Oh, I just love chili oil. And you know a good chili oil when you get, but that slight smokiness from it. Oh. Mm. Really, really good wonton. So soft. The texture of that pastry is also so fine not too chewy. And a lot of people watching this might be hesitant to order this because it's got just this puddle of chili oil on the bottom of the dish, but don't let it scare you off because it isn't actually that spicy, not overwhelmingly spicy. Like right now, I'm able to feel all sides of my mouth. My head isn't blown off by the spice. It's more nuanced, it's a bit sweet. Obviously it's a little bit salty. You get a little bit of twang of that chili, but overall it's just like a really savory experience. I actually had a friend tell me something pretty interesting the other day. That chili isn't a taste. It's actually a feeling of pain in the mouth. That's what chili does to you. It literally brings you pain. Oh, but it's a sweet pain. So, so sweet. And then to finish up the night, you can go for an amazing, super spicy hot pot where they cook it with a big pot of spicy beef fat and chili oil. The one that Ting and I used to always love to go to, it's in a local neighborhood. And the, the special thing about it, it's kind of just like a one restaurant shop. Yep. And they bring you the hot pot and the bottom is like a thick layer <laughs> of 
of like fat and chili. And it's like really cool to watch uh, the, the making and when they pour the broth on it, like it's a, it's tot and it's really spicy. This is actually a Chongqing hot pot. And the biggest difference between a Chongqing hot pot and a Sichuan or Chengdu hot pot is that the Chongqing hot pot is made on a base of butter. Um, whereas the Sichuan hot pot, Chengdu hot pot, is made on a base of oil. So butter it is. So there's our butter there, melting away slowly, slowly into the hot pot. And you may be asking, oh, we're in Chengdu. Why are we eating Chongqing style hot pot? Well, the answer to that question is Chongqing used to be a part of Sichuan province until 1997 when it became a municipality. So yeah, Sichuan and Chongqing have a lot of similarities when it comes to cuisine. When you're walking around Chengdu, you'll see Chongqing hot pot everywhere. So our base here is starting to bubble away nicely. So it is time we order some stuff. Ting, my wife, is right here. Oh, oh my gosh, I got to meet Ting. Hey. Oh my God, hi Ting. She's the hot pot ordering pro. So you bet believe I'm taking notes. Xia Hua. Xia Hua. Oh, the, the goose, goose intestine. intestine. Maybe some like, Wu Hua Rou. Wu Hua Rou, uh, squeaky yeah. pork. There's a, in Sichuan they have the, the beef, the ma la beef, right? Oh. It's too spicy. It's really spicy. They coat the beef in chili. Like the beef is coated in chili and then you dip it into chili. So I've ordered everything that Trevor suggested, except one thing I added of my own accord, and it's something called Yu Xing Tao, which is a kind of food, kind of like coriander, that some people love it and some people hate it. And I've never tried it before, so I'm interested to see what side of the scale I fall on, because a lot of people really can't stand the taste of it. So you know what, we're gonna try. In Chengdu, uh, at Hot Pot, you always have to get this uh, the soy drink. And also because they recommended it, I got this as well. They said it's very good for reducing the amount of spice. It's time to get this hot pot party started. I'm gonna start off nice and easy with the Wu Hua Rou. Oh can, you, can you see how many Sichuan peppercorns are in this spoonful? Oh my good Lord. This pork belly used to be white, now it is red. Whoa, whoa, it's been a long time since I've eaten anything that spicy. Very, very spicy, but very, very tasty, very fragrant. <laughs> but you can cool down uh, if you by adding more vinegar into your dip. If it's too spicy, just make your ratio of vinegar in your dip a little bit more. <laughs> Get all the vinegar. Now I'm gonna try another piece of that streaky pork and just dab it in some vinegar and see whether that makes a difference. That does tone down the spice a lot. Still freaking spicy though. But oh girl, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's time to level up and dip spicy marinated beef into this already super spicy hot pot. To be completely honest with you, I'm pretty scared. Okay, let's <clears throat> try. Very tender. It tastes amazing. At least right now, before that spice kicks in. Oh yeah. Yeah, spicy. <laughs> very, very spicy. That makes my mouth feel better. I think I can go in for some more of that actually. Look, it's really spicy, but I'm such a fan of this mala beef. It has such a flavor. It's so fragrant. It's really, really delicious. I just need to keep topping up. <laughs> just need to keep topping up with that vinegar. I feel like my mouth is on fire. So good. I've just had a thought and I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it. So here is Sichuan hot pot, Chongqing hot pot. There are so many things to help bring down the spice levels. Vinegar brings down spice levels. Sesame oil brings down spice levels. Bean drink brings down spice levels. Suan Mei Tang brings down spice levels. So many ways to bring down the spice levels. Here's an idea. Why not just make it a little less spicy? something to think about. I'm interested to hear your thoughts about this in the comments. Now, I'm super keen to try this Yu Sing Tao. Look, I'm not loving the smell of it. It smells a bit like dishwasher soap. My next door neighbors here, they've also ordered it. Let's, I mean, we're just gonna put a couple of bundles in the hot pot. Mm. I 
I don't know. I don't think I really like that actually. It's weird. It tastes like soap and the texture is really weird as well. It's like quite hard to bite through, but the bits that you can bite through kind of has this consistency of like mashed potato. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it another try. I don't like it. <clears throat> nope. Turns out I am not one of the chosen few that like using tar. Well, let's go for a palate cleanser. What's better than some goose intestine? And I know there'll be comments on this video. How can you eat so much in one day? Well, let me let you into a trick of the trade. I didn't film this video in one day. I've actually filmed it over the course of several days because I love eating, but I love enjoying what I'm eating. I hate the feeling of gorging myself or overeating. So usually in my videos, if there's too much that I want to film and eat in one day, I'll break it into a few. And you'll probably notice in this video that in some scenes, I've got a little pimple and then in others I don't. So that's why. And then for dessert, get the Hong Tong Bing Fen, the... Uh... I love Bing Fen so much. It's like one of my favorite yeah, yeah. things. Bing Fen is... Amazing. Arguably my favorite dessert in China. Even when I'm not in Chengdu, I have it at least once a week. I go and find it. But here in Chengdu, it's like the Bingfen paradise. Like Bingfen is everywhere here. It's like this jelly thing made from something. <laughs> I actually don't really know what it is, but it's sweet. It's got toppings of different textures, crunchy and chewy, and they top it with this sugary syrup, Hong Tong. Okay, so out of the hot pot restaurant, <laughs> and here we've got some bingfen. I told you it's not far that you have to walk before you come across some bingfen. So there's the Hong Tang there, the sugary syrup, and then it's in with the toppings. These here are the three classic bingfen toppings. You've got the peanuts, the hawthorn, and raisins. My three favorite toppings actually. <laughs> Okay, so here is my bingfen. Honestly, can you look at this and not want to eat it? It looks gorgeous, right? Those attractive toppings, green, pink, some what white cream. You've got Hong Tang on top there, that sauce that you can see, sugary syrup. And to do it properly, you need to mix it up. Like this. So excited for this. <laughs> so it's like a jelly. And in my opinion, the best bite of Bingfen is one that incorporates all of the different toppings, a little bit of everything, a bit of jelly, a bit of dried fruit, a bit of peanut. Mm. Mm. That's a good Bingfen. After a couple of bites of this, my mouth has already forgotten that I just ate something extremely, extremely spicy. I want to ask you, Bingfen is what? What Bingfen? Bingfen is... 正常的它是水和那个冰粉子的姜凝固而成的。你觉得你觉得冰粉是健康吗？健康的呀，冰粉有其实有很多功效。你我这边有描述，你可以看一下。So this side here says that bingfen is good for calming, getting rid of phlegm, relieving internal heat, detoxifying the body, and even for relieving a cough. I mean, who knew? Probably the best news I've ever received. I've tried not to ask this question whether bingfen is really, really bad for you or not because I love it so much. I'm eating so much of it. I think to hear that bingfen is not healthy in some kind of way would really hurt my heart. Now I'm just gonna eat more. <laughs> Hello! Hey. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. I have had the most amazing food here in Chengdu thanks to you. Yeah, I need to stay for another few weeks just to eat more and more and more. But I just wanted yeah. to thank you so much for all your suggestions and for joining oh. me in this video. It's been a dream come true. My pleasure. I'm happy. I'm happy to help. I'm glad that you enjoyed the food. I am so excited to share this video with you guys. Probably one of my favorite videos I have made to date. So many amazing foods. Again, thank you so much to Trevor, the food ranger. You're the best. I'm sure you guys are already following him on YouTube, but if you aren't already, you can check out the link below in my description. I've got his channel link there. I've also included the Chengdu food guide that he made uh, that I've been using for this video. So if you're planning to come to Chengdu or you're in Chengdu, uh, feel free to check that out in the link below. Yeah, drop me a comment below as well to let me know what you thought of this video, what you thought of the dishes. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Goodbye from Chengdu. Bye.